gentlemen, good afternoon, and we are live here on the roof stand at the 88th Annual Geneva Motor Show. My name is Simon Kidston, and it's my great pleasure to introduce to you the man himself, Alois Roof. Simon, thank you very much for this nice introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames, Messieurs, thank you for coming to our 88th Salon d'Automobile, and for us it's the 10th time that we are participating, and we're very proud to have you here to see at our uh, cars, cars with emotion, and all the novelties that we have to present. I, I can't help but noticing, last year everything was yellow in honor of the yellow bird, but you've gone green, others. What's the story? <laughs> well, to say the story correctly in, um, in the correct order, First it was green and then it became yellow. So just like the spring colors, you know, <laughs> when the dandelions come. So in 1978, we showed a car to the world, which was the 911 SCR. And that standing, standing for sports Carrera roof, if I, yes, if I remember correctly. That, that is very correct. It was a lightweight car and it had the very same color. And this car was shown in auto, motor and sport in the first presentation of the German publication, we all know how to want export, of course. And this is where the idea came 40 years later to bring back this car in the very same outfit. And we bring it in with the first appearance of a classic car. And the classic car is our own because we built it 40 years ago. And today it is full with new elements of current race cars, like a Le Mans car. So the silhouette, of course, is, is recognizable to those of us like me and you who were around 40 years ago and remember the original. But of course, under the skin, everything has dramatically changed, hasn't it? In that particular, the chassis. Well, we would have to look at the chassis over here, which is in this corner. So what we see in the corner there is effectively this car without its clearance on. You could say the underwear, the negligee. And this starts with a monocoque made of carbon fiber. And it has a front frame and a rear frame in lightweight steel in order to keep the crash worthiness. And the rollover bar is the same. It's also in steel, also for the crash worthiness. Race car suspension. Race car suspension, double wishbones. And it's longer than the standard car, isn't it, Dolores? Haven't you? No. It looks like you've lengthened the wheelbase compared the wheel to the production. This is the trick. The wheelbase has been lengthened by 70 millimeters, but the overall length of the car is still the same. That has not been touched. But when you look closely, and I can show you the details, because otherwise most people will not notice it, the wheelbase is 70 millimeters longer, so therefore we have less overhang in the front, and less overhang here in the rear. Now, that and, means... And no annoying rear passengers <laughs> when you're going too fast. <laughs> yes, it's a true two-seater. Yes, it is. And you will see when you look closely that the door has been lengthened by 20 millimeters in order to trick your eye that your eye does not recognize that the proportions have changed by lengthening the wheelbase. Mostly here, isn't it? It looks like... Yes, and uh, also we sent the car to the gym and the uh, side, the shoulder of the car has been enlarged by 30 millimeters. And those 30 millimeters make you, make the appearance of the fender flares smaller, so they're not so pronounced. And I can't help but noticing this absolutely fabulous would you still call that Pepita check the interior, the black and white houndstooth check, which of course was one of the typical details on 1960s Porsches? Yes, this definitely comes from the mid 60s, and I always like the Pepita for me, it's timeless. And when you look at uh, the fashion designers of the whole world, they always discover, discover, rediscover it again, you know? And this color, can't, it reminds me of the Irish green that was... It is uh, indeed, yes, <laughs> Simon, it is Irish green. It is the color that came from the early 60s. That Robert Redford's 9-11 in the film Spy Games was that color There we as go, well, yes, <laughs> there we go. And our very first 9-11 in the Roof family had this color. And you've got the bow tie to match. 
I hope that was correct. <laughs> okay, good. Now, so how many of these are you going to build? I know that you, you know, Roof is really, a, how can I put it? It's a, it's, a, it's a family company, and production numbers for you are minuscule compared yes. to the rest of the automotive industry. So, how many of these can, can you expect to build? Well, they are indeed. Uh, we can only produce 50 per year, and the first year when we start producing this car will be in the year 2020. Uh, last year we showed a car that was limited to 30 cars, which was our 2017 CTR, and uh, we are now in the production mode of that car, and this is going to blend into the production with the CTR 2017 side by side. So, so compared to the yellow car that we saw here this time last year, this is the normally aspirated car. This is normally aspirated with four liters of displacement and 510 horsepower with a flat six, four valve per cylinder water-cooled engine. Now, if I can ask you a very subjective and personal question, and it's always difficult to ask a manufacturer, does he prefer the latest car or last year's car, but to you as, as an enthusiast, which represents more the roof DNA, the turbocharged or the normally aspirated engine? Before we went turbocharged, this was the optimum that we had. Uh, but you cannot say one is better than the other, because this is how you feel, you know? Uh, if you want to feel a normal aspirated car with a revving engine and uh, with all that excitement of the intake noises and so on, it's a different feel. And the turbocharged car at the same time with the light footness and, and the way you are feeling that the power is sneaking up on you without sensing it is another great experience. So to satisfy both of these uh, desires, you need really both actually. That's exactly, I was going to yeah. say, it's, it's like a pair of ponies. You, yes. really, you, really, exactly. you need both of them. You need both of them. And the price of such, such exclusivity, I know, is 650,000 export price. So there's always the good old Nervage isn't there? Yes. <laughs> now if we look around some of the other jewels on your stand, let's, let's take for example the, the orange car in the corner. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, the orange car in the corner was here already two years ago in 2016. And it was the first prototype where we experimented with the extended wheelbase. When you look closely, you see the extended wheelbase but all those fine tweaks like lengthening the door and so on, those were not happening at that time. But basically we wanted to try out how does the car feel with a longer wheelbase and it approved because this way we found out that the high speed stability is much improved going this way with a longer wheelbase. And that's already the carbon fiber chassis? Or uh, no, still that, still that specific chassis? car had carbon fiber parts, all the movable parts like the doors, uh, front bonnet and the front fender, they were in uh, carbon, but the rest of the body was still steel and all handmade. So that really, we could say, is the, not quite the grandfather, but the older brother of this car. It, it was the predecessor giving the idea, the inspiration. And then the CTR3? The CTR3 is our top of the line mid-engine car with 777 horsepower. And um, now that's, that's actually not a brand new car, although it looks very much current. Surprise us by telling us how old it is. Ten years. It's quite we remarkable, isn't it? That car is, is ten years old. And is it fair to say that that is still... Almost eleven. <laughs> what, is it still the most radical roof that you've built yet or not? I would say so, yes. And uh, we, we have some designers, friends, that are also here in our group of our friends told us that this car has been aging very well. And uh, we were very happy to hear that comment from somebody like a, a top recognized designer, because we did not follow design schemes uh, that are aging very quickly. We wanted to have something that will look always and timeless. And this is why we came up with those very, very beautiful round shapes. And we have the clamshell to open up which is an experience by itself when you see all the technical details in the car, in the back of the car. Just don't to ask about rear visibility. Rear visibility is a... Is you a don't need it. What's behind doesn't matter. Isn't that the Italian school of driving? <laughs> that's, that's actually the best way. That's the best way. 
But it's an absolute work of art with the with the rear engine cover <laughs> open. It's like a Le Mans prototype in the pits, but with rather better quality of finishing. Yes, and, and when you sit in the car and you drive and you see these low windscreen, it makes you feel like you're in a Le Mans prototype. That is very true. And uh, 29 of those uh, built or to be built? No, to be built. And uh, we have two more to build. And then we are done. One is right now under construction. It's not exactly mass, mass production, is it? Not really, 20, 20 not really cars in 10 years. years. And I think I have to make a jump back because I didn't say how many cars I said 15 per year. So that automatically limits the amount of cars. You know, we, we're not going to say we're going to build only 20 cars or 30 cars, but being the fact that we cannot build more than 15 per year makes it always a small number. One question I don't know if you can answer, you, you probably can, but over all these years, how many roofs have you actually built? I think there are about 600 that we know of, that we always get in touch with new owners when they are going from collection to collection. So that's 600 cars since what, 1974? No, since uh, 1981. 81 was the yes. year that you were recognized yes. as a constructor, as a, as a constructor by yeah. the German transport authority. That's correct, right. yes. I always remember many, many years ago, my, my father saying to me, oh, having a Porsche isn't, isn't like it used to be once upon a time. People used to flash each other if you, if you were driving oh, a Porsche. But of course, roof owners probably still have that experience, don't they? Uh, roof owners, but I remember when I used to drive a 911 in the 60s, uh, and you saw another one. You didn't only flash the lights. You would stop and talk to the person, go for a beer, go for a coffee, exchange your information, what you were experiences you had and so on it was a very very small community it must have taken you a very long time to get anywhere yeah <laughs> even the um, stuttgart police drove porsche you know yes they did and they accepted the flash of the light you know at that time <laughs> i suppose they met you off there now the last one of course in the corner hidden hidden behind uh, yeah. some, some of the guests is the now the white car is the RTR, is that yes. correct? It's a roof turbo racing version. This is why we call it. It's the super strongest engine that we can put into the 991 based 911 here. And this is the 802 horsepower outlet engine. I like those two horsepower. I'm sure they make the big difference. They make the big difference. Of course. And, and, and how does this car fit into the roof hierarchy? So this is the most powerful car that you, you build, along with this. I believe have the same power up. Is that right? This represents basically the new era. What is the present today? of uh, these cars as far as technology with all the automatic things and help which is put in combination except it has a manual gearbox and this this power cannot be made in conjunction with the double clutch gearbox this is why we're staying with the shifting experience plus there are people they want to have the shifting experience actually i find more and more of them well, I think it's probably fair to say, you know, I'm more of a collector's car person, and so I, I learn a lot when I come to the Geneva show, but it's interesting that in our collector's world, a lot is made of the fact that a car has a, a manual gearbox or a stick shift, as they like to call it in, in the States. And it's interesting that I think the 911R had that, now other models are coming up with that as well. So there is this retro tendency where people appreciate that it's not just about efficiency and going fast, it's actually about savoring driving and feeling cars. Yes. You get that, don't you? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's about the experience. I mean, if you want to make the mathematics, uh, what is shifting better? It is definitely the double clutch gearbox near the shift change. But uh, it, it takes still away the experience of stalling the car yourself or something. But if you bought a car just to get from A to B quickly, you yeah. buy a car and go by easy jet. That's uh, right. Yeah. This is yeah. a rather more enjoyable experience, right. isn't it? It's all about the experience. So the, 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 the white car is for the person who wants a, can we say, a, is it a less expensive car? Uh, it is a less expensive car and uh, it is now going to be coming to an end with the RTR. Right because we will be concentrating more and more on what you see oh, here. Yes. So we can say it's, it's a roof for the mere millionaire rather than the millionaire. 
Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> that was that. And just remind us some of the some of the key facts about about the company, the number of people that work there. Yeah. How many cars a year? How many? How, it's, it's a tiny enterprise. It's a tiny. Some of the headline figures yeah. for, for those that aren't familiar with you. Well, 30 cars per year, and we are 65 people who are running it. And each one of us has to change the hats very, very quickly. We are multitasking, and we are very few people in the offices. Most of them are on the car and working on the car and coming up with a brilliant outcome like this. And uh, I would like to ask uh, Fritz and Hans also to come and join. They were the ones who built the prototypes uh, and built all the roof cars with their staff. Please. I think this is probably the moment for the group yes. photograph, isn't it? Which is yes, it is. Yes, yes, it is. So we have team, team, roof. I'm sure Estonia, you should be up here as well for the Look, photograph. Please. And Marcel, and wherever he's hiding. Ask Freeman to come and join us, please. <laughs> now, have we forgotten any, any other pieces of in information? Anything else that we need to convey today to, to those people who are here and need, need to get their copy written? Anything else that we've... Any questions I should ask? Have we answered everything? Or oh, yes, or indeed any orders? <laughs> I think in, I think in that case, Alois, I suggest that uh, we wrap it up, and anybody that has any questions can come and ask Please you. Marcel. Can come and ask you in the family office. Marcel, Mar where are you Mar hiding? Market Mar Marcel. Marcel Mar is here. Okay. Claudia. Claudia. Good. Can you leave? Yeah, you're right there. Great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us here in Geneva in uh, March 2018 for this year's Roof Press Conference. Do come and ask any questions you have afterwards. Estonia and the team have all the information you need. Once again, great to see you, and until next year, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. Great for you.